Hey everybody, it's Juanita and Jason here, and today we are going to continue with our Rank and Rent website. This is episode three of the series, so if you remember, uh, if you haven't seen number one, you can watch it here. If you haven't seen number two, you can watch that one there. Um, and where we left off was Jason last showed us how to structure pages and add content. And I have gone in and added content. I've duplicated those pages, uh, the process, uh, added the content. And now we are needing to add forms. So that is what he is going to show us how to do today. So yep. take it away, Jay. Awesome. So yes, we started building a site in episode one. We talked more about what Rank and Rent is on um, episode two. But if you haven't seen it, go watch those. In a nutshell, though, basically we're trying to rent uh, a site out by ranking it on Google. We own the site. We're doing all we do to get it ranked. And then now we just find somebody in the area that does that service and we rent the site out. They get all the leads on that site, um, no matter what, for $500 a month, $1,000 a month, whatever it is. But if they ever stop paying, we still own the site. We can go and rent it out to somebody else in the area. So it just gives us kind of a digital real estate property. Now, Juanita has gone and done a lot of work on the site um, in the interim. So she started building out some of these pages with different services like uh, katieconcreteservice.com slash residential dash patio. So we have a bunch of pages like this that she has built, but you'll notice on some competitor sites, we've been looking at a lot of different competitors to see what they're doing. And some of them have these uh, quote forms. So the main thing we want people to do is actually call so that no, that phone call can go directly to the business owner and they can handle the service. But some people want to fill out forms. So we're going to build a form, maybe not this colorful, but it will uh, have all of these components here. And then at the end of this video, we're actually going to drop that form on one of our pages and then we'll go and build the rest of those pages out with the form uh, moving forward. So any questions so far we need before we get into the building of the form? Yeah. So why are we going to build a form if the main thing is that we want them to call us? Just because some people may not want to call quite yet. They're kind of in that early research phase. So this just gives us one other point of, of collecting that lead and forwarding it on to the business owner um, so we can capture leads here. But prominent thing on the site is going to be call here. There's going to be multiple opportunities for them to pick up the phone and call for the fast action taker takers. We're also going to have the chat widget so people can get their questions answered that way. But we also just want to have a forum every now and then just, just in case. So that's why All we're right. doing it. And we can show people how to build a forum on this, on the episode. So right. Of course. There we go. Um, what my other question would be, is a forum a great way of qualifying leads? Uh, it depends. Um, it's a good way to, yeah, I mean, you can at least give the business owner something to have some ammunition to call them because we're going to put a spot like they have here for tell us about your project. So tell us about the, the work that you need. There'll be a drop down for the type of work. So it just gives them priority if they're wanting to sort through their leads and call people that want uh, stamped concrete before anything else, then that will give them some flexibility there too. All right. So- one more question. Okay. Should we be putting, because obviously someone who is filling out a form isn't necessarily an urgent buyer, right? Like they're most likely top of funnel, perusing, you know, curious. Um, so should we put a call us now as well as a, or fill out the form? Well, what we'll do on a future uh, segment of this is an automation. So people that have filled out the form We'll have something fire off to them to um, that will be like an instant text message type of thing. So that should help turn some of those people into a little bit hotter leads or at least into a real conversation. Um, but absolutely, like any anything you can do to connect the business owner to the lead faster is best. So hopefully a lot of people fill out the chat here, but the forum will have some things that, that start firing um, as soon as they fill out the forum as well. But we won't have a caller? Like, you know, if someone finds this page, right, they happen to put in residential patios and they come to this page first mm -hmm. um, and they are urgent, shouldn't there be a, just like, here's the phone number, call me? Yeah, absolutely. Well? We need we need to add a phone number to the page as well. So very good point. Uh, what I think we're probably going to do is 
up here. Oh, you can't see the screen. Up here on the top of the page, we'll probably have a button here. So we'll move this stuff over and we'll have mm -hmm. a big like call button here. And then okay. probably another one like somewhere uh, down the page or or maybe in the middle of this content somewhere. We'll okay. build and one you're, as well. You're saying here, but uh, we're not seeing where? Oh, up here on the top. You can, can you see the, the screen? Just here? next to the logo? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I have two screens here. So up here, my mouse was on a different screen. Okay. So up here on the top, the mm -hmm. button will be, and then probably somewhere down in this section or possibly through the content, we'll have some, some opportunities for the phone number too. All right. And maybe even once they submit the form, we'll have it go to a landing page or something uh, where they can, it'll be like, call us now or start chatting with us now. Or we'll figure that part out after this. All right. So. We're going to go into our high-level dashboard. You can see we have an open space for the form here. Now, what's great about high-level forms is you can build the form one time and then drop it into wherever you want that form to be versus sometimes if you're on a, a website builder, you have to build a brand new form every single time or it's just not as intuitive. So basically what I'm saying is I can build this form. I can set up all the automations that happen after somebody fills out that particular form and then just drop it on whatever pages I want. If I wanted a different form for a different purpose somewhere else, I could do that, but um, I don't have to rebuild this form over and over and over again. Very cool. And so um, that form that you build for this account, can you store that form in your uh, in high levels library? and then use that same form for a different company? Um, you wouldn't want to do that because you're gonna set up automations that come specifically from KD Concrete. You can duplicate that form though to make it easier so you don't have to go um, and recreate the whole thing from scratch. I'll show you all that mm -hmm. side, but then that okay. would be attached to company B, company C uh, that way, but you want a unique form for this specific company. Okay, um, just to clarify, if I build a form and it's a great form as far as just, uh, you know, what it's asking, what it's doing or what it says, I can duplicate that form and I can use it for a different account. Yeah. If it's a duplicated form, you can then attach it to a new company. And then if you wanted company C to use that, you just duplicate it again and attach that. You'd obviously then um, you'd use different automation. So you'd have to duplicate right. the automation, all that stuff. But yes, you can uh, use it as a framework, just like this is a template we could use this for Dallas concrete. We would just change all the, the info out here, but okay. the structure would be the same. Okay. So let's get into this. All right. So let me get into my high level dashboard. I think I'm here. Okay, perfect. So all we do is under the same section that we were editing the websites under sites, we have funnels up here. We have websites, but we also have forms right here. So you can see they have um, a form builder. So if you just attach, uh, uh, tap the button builder here and click add form, it will bring up the, the builder for the form. There's all kinds of templates you can use, but I like the pretty clean, simple ones uh, that they already have installed here. Uh, another thing you'll notice down here is this, I agree, I agree to terms and conditions provided by the company. So this is going to be key if you're trying to get a phone number approved and things like that through that A2P process that I'm very near uh, producing a video on, um, you're, you're gonna need this little checkbox here to verify that you've, people have given you permission to reach out to them via text message. So this is something you're gonna wanna keep on your forms. So you'll notice on the example we're using, they have name, email, phone, desired service, and tell me about your project or tell us about your project. On ours, we just have first name, last name, email, phone, but we don't have the other two things. So those are very easy to add in here. We're just going to hit this little plus sign in the top left, add form element. Then we're going to do um, custom fields. Then we're going to do add custom fields. Custom fields is basically um, if you want to do a drop down, you want to do um, like a text box, you want to do a date, you want somebody to have to do a signature, you want the ability for them to upload files like pictures or PDFs, you can drop any of those types of things in here. Uh, we're going to do drop down multiple because it's going to be a multiple choice selection here and hit next. Then it's going to say, what do you want those drop down fields to say? 
So let's look at their form and get some ideas here. So driveways, patios, stamped concrete, other. So we can start with those. So we had uh, driveways. We'll, we'll do that as the first one. And that's going to be um, part of the contact. And then we're going to group this. Let's see if we can put that in additional info. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. This is a service is what this should be. Service requested. And then this is where we do driveways. And then what was some of the others? Patios, stamped concrete. Decorative concrete, walkway, yep. entryways. Okay. Walkways. Oh, you want to know all the... Just a few. We don't have to do all of them, but we'll do a few Oh, more. really? Um, uh, entryways. Can you do some commercial ones? Um, nice. Trash pads. Entry with the um, RY. That one gets you every time. I know. Uh, what was it? Trash pads? Trash pads. I'm trying to think of the one for pools, but it might be like pool slabs. Oh, uh, you can do um, warehouse floors, okay. warehouse flooring. You need more? Oh, we can just do other. Garage. Okay. Oh, yeah. Garage floors. And something I did notice uh, on stamped concrete, you might want to do decorative slash stamped or and stamped um something i did notice is that i made everything plural uh moving mm -hmm. forward but that very first one that we did with the patio mm -hmm. residential patio wasn't so i don't know if that matters or if that can be changed um i don't think it matters but we'll we'll take a look at it all right um so yeah, now we have another one though all right now we've uh selected our options. You can go back and add more if you like uh, later on, but this is more than the first form had. Now you'll see in a second. Let's see where it is. Did I not save it? Oh, there we go. So now we're back on this form. You should see the option over here. You just drag this wherever you want it to go on your form. Okay. So there'll be a little drop down here. Now we just need one final field here, which is for tell us about your project. This is going to be kind of like an open text field for them to add whatever they want. So we'll add another custom field here, which is going to be a text input, multi-line. So it's a big text box where somebody can enter their, their uh, service requested there. And it'll be us, your project. And we'll make this part of additional info as well. This is going to be what's in the field. Hit save. Now we'll drag this underneath. There we go. Awesome. So now we have our form built. We just need to save our form so we know, if, especially if we have multiple forms at some point uh, under this sub account, we know what it is. So this is going to be concrete service. So, uh, how do you make things mandatory and how do you make them optional and why do you make certain things optional? Great question. So first step, how to make them mandatory, we're going to just select any of these fields and you can just tap required and that will start right there so you know it's required. So we'll do that and just do these and let's see if we can make this required to, yep, it's already required. So um, why do we make them required is sometimes, especially contact info type of fields, we want to make required number one, obviously, so we can get back to the people, but number two, uh, none of the functions as far as a workflow can fire if there's no email or phone attached. So you need at least one of those to be able to set a slew of automation so that it knows how to reach out to the person. Awesome. Then we don't want it the, bu the button to just say button. So we're going to say, give Submit. me a quote. Yeah. I like to do uh, buttons sometimes in the voice of the of the customer. So like, having them submit the button by saying, give me a quote or send me the package or send me the info or I want the info, like that kind of stuff down there is just what I like to do. So I had to go to our main site just to get the button color of our, our main button, just to make sure that any uh, buttons on our forms are gonna be similar in color. So we have this, this uh, typical green that we have on most of our, our high level um, buttons here. So, we're going to go back to our form really quickly. Just make sure the green is the same. It looks like it's a little off. So let's see if we can fix that. Make it a little brighter. I don't have the actual hex code. So we're just going to eyeball it here. It's pretty good. 
So we're going to save. And then the final thing we're going to do on this is add this form to one of our pages, just so you see how that works. And then behind the scenes after um, this video, we're going to fill in all the other pages. And then in the future video, we'll talk to you, talk to you about automations and what we can do with these forms. So this form is saved under concrete service request. So we're just going to go back to our page really quickly. All right, so we're in our, our dashboard here. We're just going to edit one of these and add the form in. So let me pull this residential patio form up and we're going to edit. And then I'm gonna show you a quick little hack that you might not have known. I just discovered it on our last video. It's uh, a new feature that High Level has to um, save things that are kind of a work in progress. So right here, we have this blank space we've set up in our, um, in our page. So we basically built two columns, one that's a little bigger for the content, one on this side is for the actual form. Now we need to add the form here. So we're just going to hit this little plus sign and type in form. That's gonna be here. We're going to, uh, where'd it go? I might've added it somewhere on the page here, but we're gonna hit this element, drag the form over, and then that will drop right into this section. And then we're going to select the form, which is the form that we just created. If you wanted to create one from scratch, you, you could do that from that screen as well. There's a little uh, button there. But now the form is here. You can see it's a little lower uh, than everything. So we're gonna try to get that up to the top. Let's see, maybe by uh, moving the column over a little, we can get it a little higher. Oh, there we go. Now the padding is coming in. Let's see. So we're gonna make this padding zero. That'll get us a little higher. And then spacing, we're going to, instead of center, let's see, default start. Let's see if that does it. So that moved it up a little. Left, does that do anything? There we go, nice. perfect. So left align is what boosted it up there. Now in the future, if we wanted to add our phone number at the top, which probably we'll do, that might bump this thing down a little. But overall, uh, the form is in here. We're gonna hit save and let's just preview it. So here is our form and why we're putting this on these pages is some of these pages are likely to rank too because they're about a specific service. So hopefully these, um, this one for patios uh, in Katy will, will rank and then somebody might just stumble on this site by itself. So we will be adding the phone number multiple places and things, but you can see the form um, already works. Let's just check the drop down here. Uh, service requested, let's make sure. So we have all the options we, we selected earlier. And this uh, this is a cool thing I didn't realize when I selected that multiples for the dropdown. I didn't realize at the time, but this allows them to select multiple options. So there was another one for singular, and that meant, uh, now I'm seeing this, that meant that they could only select one, but maybe they want multiple things so they can pick them here, which is cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And then in here, they can tell about their project. They'll select this box, hit give me a quote, and then that form will fire off. Now, I promise you there was a little hack, uh, something that you needed to see here. So something I just discovered is High Level now has two options to save. You can either save and not publish or just publish. Now, saving without publishing um, means that you're still working on the site. Like maybe we're adding a little content, but we're not ready for it to go public to a live audience yet. So in that case, we would just do save, and then that's just kind of saved internally. Once I hit publish, then all those changes are now published to the live site. Another cool thing is maybe we made some changes and then we realized we shouldn't have done that. Like we hate the way it looks. We got inspired to do something, but now we don't want to do that. They have a, a versions button here, which if you tap this, this will open up, uh, let me save first. This will open up a, um, database of all the different changes that we've done to this particular page. And I can go back to any uh, previous version. I'm not sure how far back it goes because this is a newer site. So it's probably going to have all the different times I've saved, but uh, it does allow me to go back and instantly publish an older version of the site. So that's really mm -hmm. cool too. Yeah. So let me show you what that looks like when we get it pulled up and then we'll wrap this thing up. So here are all of the older versions of this site and you can preview any of them by just tapping them. It's not going to edit the site or anything until you hit publish. But this is an older version before we, we even did anything to this site. You can see how it used to look. And if I wanted to make this live, I would just hit publish and it would instantly go live. Wow. But now we're on version 14 of the times that we have saved this site. So 
Let's just look at version 13 because that's probably pretty similar. Just to show you that example, this is before the form it looks like. So if we hit publish here, you'll see over here, we'll instantly swap to now version 13 is live. So now we'll go back to 14 just to put our form back on there, hit publish, and now it's corrected. Very cool. That's awesome. That's a great yeah. feature. Yeah, it makes things a lot easier because what used to happen is we had to finish all of our work before we publish. Otherwise, um, it was just going to have a half finished site live on the internet. They didn't have this kind of save step in between. So this is really cool. Nice. Yeah. So I have uh, just a couple of questions. Um, when you said you went in there and you said we could have just built the form right in there. Mm -hmm. How come we didn't do that? Not uh, built it in there. There was just a button to go to the page that we already went to to build the form. Uh, so it just okay. gave you an option like don't have one, click here to to create one, and then it would bring you over to the site that we created. Got you. Okay. Um, and then um, when we add the phone number, do we have to go in and change each page then? Yeah. So there are some ways to add. Um, let me see how to explain this best. There are some ways to add let's what's called a global section. So maybe the header up there where it is, uh, I'll pull up the site in a moment, it's just loading, but we'll have the header section that has uh, home, residential, commercial, whatever, and maybe the phone number. Mm -hmm. Once we save that as a global section, we can add that global section to every other page that we've created. And then now anytime we make a change to that at any point, it will change all of them. So uh, that's oh, one wow. way to speed some things up. But we kind of did this a little bit out of order because we're kind of figuring this process out as we go. Uh, so we probably should have, before you added all the content to those pages, we probably should have built the form first. That way it would have mm -hmm. already, as we duplicated those pages, it would have been on there already. But it's really right. easy to add. So it's not, uh, and we don't have a thousand pages. Um, so it's not going to take forever. So the same will go for the phone number. We'll have to go in and add it. But can you make anything a global section? Yeah. So uh, okay. let me share my screen here, show you. So we don't have to individually. Like if I wanted this uh, this part to be a, a global section and maybe I, I knew I was going to um, add the phone number and everything on this, mm -hmm. I could let's see, where's that button? Where's the globe? So it has to be um, this green area, which is which is a, a whole section. Hmm. If you see over here, there's a save oh, no. button. Yeah. So we hit save here. We can name it as main or whatever, and it will be in global sections. And then every time we updated any of this, this is more for like, if you're going to always have reviews or your map or, or things like the header and the footer. The like bottom, this, the frequent last yeah, questions. This, this part, yeah. So uh, that's more for what these are for. Okay, so we wouldn't do that in this case to add forms to every single page. No, not in this case. That's a good point. If it was a form by itself, like just a top section with a form, then that's where we would do that part. Okay, because you cannot, you can't just choose that form right now and make it global. Right. Mm. Yep. All right. So ideally in this process, if we were, when we repeat it again, what we would do is uh, put the layout, right? So we would make one page and we would design that page to have the content and the text um, on the right. And then we would go ahead and put in the form. We'd put in the phone number and everything else that we want each page to have. And then we would, or actually we wouldn't even put in the content, correct? Because in order to to make that global, we would have had to make that text global as well. Yeah, so we would just have mm -hmm. a content section here. Um, but really, even if we added stuff in the future, that would change that um, that section. So it would be replacing this content on every site. So we probably wouldn't, for any place that we're putting content, we wouldn't make a global section here. But we could, we, what we should have done uh, looking back is built this whole thing out with the correct header, the uh, form, just basically the perfect page and then started mm -hmm. duplicating those pages and replacing the content here with the new content. Okay. So it might be, hmm. I'm just thinking, would it be easier then 
to like stop, drop, and roll to be like, we're going to build the perfect page and then I'm going to duplicate that like 20 times or however many pages we have and then just copy and paste the text. Would that be easier? Uh, probably. Uh, I think that's probably the the move for next time. We'll try each, each one and see how long it takes. We're not changing too many things on on here. So it just kind of depends on preference because the other way you're going to have to copy the pages and rename them and delete the other one. So there's still a few steps in that process, which it might be easier just to drop the form in really quickly and, and update mm -hmm. this, like this section and this section, we can make the global section. So it's not going to be that hard to, to make these perfect, like anything below the content. But just to clarify as well, uh, you see how this still says bathroom remodel. Mm -hmm. When you make something global, can you change the text afterwards? Can you make different adjustments? Yes. So basically, like this is this would be a global section. We would save the section, make it a global section. Then if we um, if we changed anything on here, it would change on all the places that we we dropped this thing. So we would only okay. have f frequently asked questions. Um, for the entire site that we would drop on every page. Got you. But that's, so that's why we couldn't necessarily just change the content because then every time we change the content, it would change every other page. Exactly. And it okay. even warns you too, that you're about to edit a global section, meaning it's going to affect your entire site. Right. You typically see it most with like a header section here. Okay. Um, because you want to make sure that the header is the same for the most part right. on every single page. Okay. So we'll do that on a future video. I'll show you exactly how to save um, these global sections and replace them. It, it's it sounds like it's a lot more work than it than it is. It's really not that bad. You just yeah. literally just tap it, drag it over, and it fills it in. I mean, we are clicking buttons here, people. But that being said, since you made it this far into the episode, uh, you get the cookie. Just remember anything, you know, when you're setting up your pages and you're formatting everything that you want to be on every single page, like a header and a form and a phone number and a footer, and you want that to all be consistent throughout, go ahead and set up the page first like that so you can make it global and then you can duplicate it right um and just change the content yeah and that would be the next pro tip on how we would systemize this um but good to know that was really i'm glad i asked that question um build a form one time why didn't you build it right there yep i asked that when you when we got the form to go up you left aligned and that's mm -hmm. what helped it go up. But then it was kind of to the left. And I was like, oh, I really wish now that it's high enough that we could center it. But then when I saw it afterwards, it looks like it did center itself. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, look at it one more time and see if there's a way to widen it or make it a little more center. Yeah, without lowering it, right? And I know that's like, this is so... It's minutia, but you know, I like the well, details they, of things. They've added a lot more on this margin and padding. This is like a brand new breakthrough for a high level where you can do a lot more with with this in a lot easier manner. Okay. So let's just see if we so we're right now I'm trying to mess with the form, but let me see if I just do this section, which is this uh light mm -hmm. purple area. Oh, okay. So alignment horizontal. Okay, so that widened it. Yep. There you good. that did it. And yeah, then I let's just see what default does. So if not, I'll go back to start. Well, it's actually kind of just playing a trick on our eyes because we're judging the centering of it from those outlines that won't be there. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better uh, with the wider mm. form anyway. So we'll publish yeah. that just to be safe. Okay. And then um, lastly, I see orange sometimes. I see purple. I see green mm -hmm. like you're doing right now. What do What does each color mean? So they each have different names. I'll see if I can remember by adding them. Let's see. So the looks like the orange says paragraph. So if mm -hmm. we needed to add another one, we hit, let's see. So, okay, so here so we that's are. That's an element. So sections, so sections are the big 
green ones. Rows okay. are inside of that, and then elements are inside of that. So a paragraph is an element. A form okay. is an so element. Okay, so orange is element. Mm -hmm. Orange is when you're adding an element. Okay, what is green? What is purple? Purple. Green is, is section. Okay, so green is the big one. Mm -hmm. So, so we're going to edit a whole section. Yeah, so I'll show you just from this. Okay. Um, we hover Blue. over. Let me get to another green spot. So we're going to hit this green button. Mm -hmm. and this is adding a section. Mm. You can do full width, width, uh, wide, uh, medium, or small. So let's just. So it's kind of about here. the space of a section. Uh huh. I see. So we're going to add a row, which this gives us the ability to do different columns. So like here, we did a two, a two column row. So we have mm -hmm. the text on this side, the form on this side. We could do three, four, five, six. Uh, let's just do four to show you. So now we have four mm. different parts on here. And then inside of this, we're going to add elements. An element can be anything. It could be a form, a picture, a, a text box. Um, we'll give you some other ideas here. Basically, anything that would go inside of any of those, a video, a survey, a calendar, any of these can be dropped into those uh, buttons there. Okay. okay. And that was purple? No, that was a... Uh, Green. No, um, almost there. Blue. Blue? And okay. then the purple is a column inside of that. So each one of these columns is purple, just like this is... Um, Orange is the element, but then inside of the element or outside of the element is, we should get a purple somewhere. Don't you have to go into the blue? It's inside. Yeah. I'm just, it's hard, hard sometimes go. hard to click on these. Yeah. So there's purple there, which is one of the columns in this two column row. Hmm. Okay. So our largest one is green, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a whole section. Yep. And once you, and that's about the space, like creating rows and stuff, creating yeah. sections. Mm -hmm. And then, well, orange does that. Orange, orange creates sections within the section. Okay. Orange is the element. Mm -hmm. So green is the section. And then orange is the elements where you can create elements within the section. Mm -hmm. And then to go inside of the element would be blue. And that's uh, where you can create. No. So it's blue. I'm sorry, it's um, green is the section. Then mm -hmm. inside of the section is a row, and you can have uh, multiple columns in a row, one column or four columns or six columns. And then once you have the row, then you add elements to whatever's in that row. So I'll show you one more time. So green, we're going to add a section. Then inside of the section is a row, which is made up of one column or multiple columns. We'll just do one column this time to show you. And then inside of that, we're going to add an element, which is element is any of these things. And then you can also drag these things around with this little drag option. I could drag this up here and it adds them to those uh, areas. Not dragging perfectly right now. Well, we're not dragging right now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. We don't need to drag this thing on further. Exactly. There you go. But I'm bump. So. That is that. It takes just a little bit. Uh, it gets a little confusing, and it's definitely sometimes hard to click on the right thing. Um, but I would sacrifice that uh, versus the ability to not have, not be able to put things in their place very easily. A lot of other builders make you like um, really maneuver your margins and all that stuff, and kind of know how to how to shape things. I don't want to spend time doing that. I would rather just have something that. Um, We'll just drop things into blocks and make it easier for me to move things around. Nice. Awesome. And one final thing, if you ever want, say you accidentally did three columns here, you wanted to drop one down and make it a little wider, you can just delete any of these and it'll then turn from a three column to a two column or, or a one column. So it just makes things a bit easier there. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, Jason, if someone wants to build websites using high level, what would they do? Great question. So you are going to go to ghlfree.com. There's a, a link down below that will give you a free 30 day trial to high level. And um, that's to the top tier plan that they have. But at any point, if you need to, you can drop down to a lower tier for this rank and rent model that we're doing. If you have no intentions of getting people to sign up for your software and pay you like 
hundred to three hundred dollars a month, like we're talking about, for uh, to log into their own dashboard, then you'd be fine with just the two ninety seven plan because that would give you unlimited sub accounts or client accounts, as someone suggested we use. Um, that will allow you to put websites like a concrete site on one sub account and a plumbing site on another sub account. Rank uh, rent those things out once you rank them on Google, and then all those leads will be tracked just to that business owner, which makes it really cool. And uh, then you can just duplicate the funnel over to a new site. Say we want to do uh, San Antonio concrete tomorrow. We can just duplicate this whole site, put it over there. Obviously, we're going to have to change a few things around the, the title of the site, the um, some of the content in here. But for the most part, we have a site that's, that's close to ready to go. And we'll, we'll spruce up the content, change the colors up a bit, but we don't have to start from scratch again, which is cool. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you guys for watching and for all of your comments. They're really helping us just kind of navigate uh, what you really want to see, what you need to see. Um, thanks for hanging in there with all of this. You seem to really enjoy it. So uh, that's fantastic for us. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and continue to comment. Uh, we also have our community opening back up uh, very soon. So be on the lookout for that as well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye, guys.